Just a few months ago, scientists announced the San Andreas Fault is due for another major earthquake, specifically in Southern California, where there hasn't been a major quake since 1857. If you can't, you need to find any means possible to drop, cover, and hold on, because your life is going to depend on it. In the heart of Southern California, the ground trembles with the force of monstrous storms and a powerful 5.1 earthquake is causing widespread panic. The infamous San Andreas Fault, notorious for its destructive power, has captured the attention of onlookers, instilling a deep sense of dread in the hearts of locals. An ominous feeling hangs in the air as the ground rumbles and the sky grows darker with each passing moment. What dark secret lurks beneath the surface, waiting to be unleashed? Join us as we explore the San Andreas crack that is about to cause the greatest catastrophe in history. The pending earthquake. It's been about 300 years since the last big earthquake hit Southern California. Many Californians know about the San Andreas Fault, which is speculated to cause another big one that will be very destructive. Recently, Thomas Jordan, the head of the Southern California Earthquake Center, released scary news. He said that the San Andreas Fault is in bad shape and that there is every possibility of an earthquake happening soon. Even though this isn't the first time they have received a warning like this, recent predictions say the biggest earthquake along the San Andreas Fault could be 8.0, and there's a 7% chance that such a big quake could happen in Southern California within the next 30 years. Also, there is a 75% chance of a quake with a magnitude of 7.0. Even though 7.0, 8.0, and 9.0 might not sound very different, they release a lot of energy. A 9.0 quake will release 32 times more energy than an 8.0 and 1,000 times more energy than a 7.0. After careful examination, it is said that the San Andreas Fault has a maximum limit of around 8.2 on the Richter scale, significantly less potent than the earthquake in Japan in 2011. Unfortunately, scientists cannot accurately predict earthquakes, but they can give close enough predictions, and they believe that earthquakes of this size happen every 100 years, making the warning of the big one happening this time more real. The fact is that there has not been a major release of stresses in the southern portion of the San Andreas Fault System since 1857, but it is different now because the San Andreas Fault is one of many lines that show where the Pacific and North American plates meet. Both plates are going north, but the Pacific plate is going faster than the North American one. This means that pressure is always building up between the plates. In 1906, a lot of pressure was suddenly released in the San Francisco Bay Area, causing a big earthquake with a magnitude of 7.8. Another strong earthquake happened in Northern California in 1989, known as the Loma Prieta earthquake, with a magnitude of 6.9. However, big earthquakes like these have yet to occur along the San Andreas Fault in the southern part of the state. But it continued and grew to a 15-second 6.9 magnitude killer. The 1994 Northridge event, even though it was significant, happened on a different nearby fault. This lack of large earthquakes along the southern San Andreas Fault has raised concerns that a major earthquake, often called the Big One, might happen soon, given the significant stress that may have built up over time, even though the idea of a big earthquake coming soon might be scary. It's important to know that modern rules for building and how things are built have improved. In Southern California, people have worked a lot to strengthen buildings to handle earthquakes better. While no building can be completely safe from earthquakes, these changes have made it much less likely for buildings to get seriously damaged. But there are still some things to worry about. Important things like power lines, phones, and roads might still be at risk during a big earthquake. If there is a big earthquake, it could cause a lot of damage. For example, the earthquake in Loma Prieta caused many power and communication problems, showing that earthquakes can easily hurt these systems. In the 1989 earthquake, 
More than 60 people lost their lives, and many others got hurt. But because of emergency plans and getting people away, lives were saved, and the overall impact was less bad. It's important to remember that infrastructure, like roads and buildings, is crucial in preparing for disasters. The 1989 Loma Prieta earthquake showed that roads, bridges, and utilities can easily get damaged during earthquakes. Many homes and businesses in San Francisco were broken or destroyed, causing big economic losses. John Woodall, the vice president of engineering at Integrated Arc Systems, said that the roads near the middle of the San Andreas Fault could make it hard to help people, especially in crowded California. If a major earthquake happens along the San Andreas Fault, the problems with infrastructure will become even more obvious. Discovery and Impact The story of the San Andreas Fault started with Professor Andrew Law from the University of California, Berkeley, in 1895. He found the fault, but its real importance only became clear during the huge earthquake of 1906, famously called the San Francisco Earthquake. Professor Lawson's study after the 1906 earthquake showed a deep link between the fault and the powerful quake. Surface breaks, like split fences and roads, perfectly match the fault, introducing a new idea in seismology, the intermediate depth earthquake. The appearance of the San Andreas Fault changes along its length, while some parts show a clear straight drop, forming lakes, bays, and valleys. These features may only sometimes be easily seen from the ground. For instance, drivers near San Francisco might not know they are in the San Andreas earthquake zone as they pass close to Crystal Springs Reservoir. The San Andreas Fault is considered one of the riskiest geological features in the United States, causing loss of life and significant property damage over the years. The area around the fault has seen notable earthquakes, with two particularly important ones in 1857 and 1906. The 1857 earthquake, with a magnitude of 7.9, left destruction along about 185 miles, showing the potential devastation the San Andreas Fault can cause. Despite these past earthquakes, there has been a recent decrease in seismic activity along the fault. Since 1857, the Southern California section of the fault, known as the hub, has not had a major earthquake. This long silence has made scientists worry about the potential big earthquake soon. Some think the stress and pressure along the fault could lead to a significant seismic event, the big one. The San Andreas Fault goes through several cities, including Desert Hot Springs, San Bernardino, Whitewood, Palmdale, Gorman, Fraser Park, Daly City, Point Reyes Station, and Bodega Bay. These urban areas are at risk of earthquakes at any time, and the results of a big earthquake could be devastating. Considering the potential for damage, loss of life, and economic impact if the big one hits, preparedness becomes not just a choice, but a necessity for these vulnerable communities. San Andreas's Fault Many small earthquakes happen in California yearly, showing scientists where faults are in the Earth's crust. The biggest earthquakes on the San Andreas Fault were in 1857 and 1906. The Fort Tejon earthquake of 1857 happened around 8.20 a.m. on January 9th in Central and Southern California. It's one of the biggest recorded earthquakes in the United States, estimated to have a magnitude of 7.9. The quake affected the southern part of the San Andreas Fault, stretching about 225 miles between Parkfield and Wrightwood. Even though the center was near Parkfield, it's called the Fort Tejon earthquake because the most damage occurred there. Fort Tejon is just north of where the San Andreas and Garlock Faults meet, where the Tehachapi, San Emigdio, and Sierra Palona transverse ranges unite. The earthquake caused a lot of damage to most adobe buildings at Fort Tejon, and many people got hurt. More buildings were destroyed along a 20-mile stretch from Fort Tejon southeast to Elizabeth Lake, which is a sag pond directly on the San Andreas Fault. Streams and springs were disturbed in San Diego and Santa Barbara counties, and overflow happened from the Kern River, Kern Lake, and Los Angeles River. The well water flow was affected in Santa Clara County, farther north. 
Ground cracks from the liquefaction of swampy ground were seen near the Pueblo de Los Angeles and in the Oxnard Plain, with ground fissures reported near the Los Angeles, Santa Ana, and Santa Clara rivers. Central and Southern California had a low population during the earthquake, which likely helped limit the damage, but fewer people also meant less information for figuring out how bad it was. Areas with more people, like San Francisco, Stockton, and Los Angeles, gave better information about what happened. In downtown Los Angeles, with a maximum felt intensity of the six, some homes and buildings were cracked, but no big damage was reported. In Ventura, the roof of Mission San Buenaventura collapsed, and the bell tower was damaged. Up north, the front wall of the old Adobe Mission Santa Cruz Chapel collapsed. Two reported deaths included a woman killed by a collapsing adobe house in nearby Gorman, and an older man may have collapsed and died in the Los Angeles area because of the earthquake. On Wednesday, April 18, 1906, at 5.12 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, a big earthquake hit the Northern California coast. It was strong, estimated to be a 7.9 on the scale, and it caused a lot of shaking from Eureka in the north to the Salinas Valley in the south of the San Francisco Bay Area. After the earthquake, huge fires in San Francisco lasted for many days. It was very bad, with over 3,000 people dying and more than 80% of the city being destroyed. This earthquake is remembered as the deadliest in U.S. history and one of the worst disasters in California. Early estimates said between 375 and over 500 people died, but many deaths in Chinatown weren't counted. The exact number of deaths is still not known, but some reports say it could be between 700 and 3,000 or even more. In 2005, the city's leaders officially said 3,000 plus was the total. Most of the people who died were in San Francisco, but 189 died in other parts of the Bay Area. Cities like Santa Rosa and San Jose also suffered a lot of damage. In Monterey County, the earthquake changed the Salinas River's path permanently. About 227,000 to 300,000 people lost their homes out of a population of around 410,000. Half of the people who left went to Oakland and Berkeley. Newspapers discussed tents everywhere in Golden Gate Park, the Presidio, the Panhandle, and the beaches from Ingleside to North Beach. More than two years later, some people still lived in camps. The earthquake and fires had a big and lasting impact on California. Even though the city was built again quickly, the disaster changed things. Trade, industry, and people moving to Los Angeles became more important than in San Francisco. Many famous writers and poets from San Francisco went to Carmel-by-the-Sea, making it an art colony. The 1908 Lawson Report by Professor Andrew Lawson of the University of California showed that the same San Andreas Fault that caused trouble in San Francisco was also close to Los Angeles. This earthquake was the first big one to have pictures and movies, and it happened when people were learning a lot more about earthquakes. On May 18, 1940, a magnitude 7.1 earthquake occurred along a fault in the Imperial Valley that wasn't recognized before. A similar movement happened in November 1979. The biggest surface movement in the 1940 earthquake was 17 feet of sideways motion. This fault is part of the San Andreas system. Other earthquakes with probable magnitudes of seven or more occurred on the Hayward Fault in 1836 and 1868 and on the San Andreas Fault in 1838. In the event of an earthquake, how sustainable are you? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for watching, and remember to like and subscribe to more interesting videos like this.